Hey guys, I'm Pac the Pirate, and this has been a huge week in Star Atlas. I mean, they've released so much content about Sage, it's not even funny. Um, we also have Unreal Engine 5 content, racing, ground racing, uh, stuff to involve the Calico Max Hog, the ship they just released. So, today, we're going to go ahead and go over that, but before that, we're going to do some gameplay. Um, I would like to get better at flying, so I need some practice. And then after that, we've got a little surprise for everybody. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Alright guys, please bear with me uh, for the poor video and audio quality. This is my first time making a YouTube video, and Michael Wagner's done a good job on keeping you guys safe from space pirates like me. For now. But... That means that I must rely on Payday to upgrade my equipment. I want to introduce you guys to the RLS Legacy. Currently, this is my flagship. But I hope to one day be able to afford the Amboy. I think that's how you say it. Love that ship. Alright guys, so my graphics card really did not like the showroom, and I decided to go to the flight trainer, but that actually brings up a very interesting point that I think a lot of people overlook, is this nice little base that we have inside this asteroid. I mean, it's got an extra extra small landing pad on it. The entrance to what could be a mining facility. And we have this blue ore. I wonder if we can explore. Look at this. And so this is what we have to look forward to. I'm getting a whole lot better at this. I might actually be a pirate yet. Alright guys, now that we've played a little bit, time to get serious. Let's see what Star Atlas has been up to this week. So we have their, my favorite video. This is their Unreal Engine 5 content and this, this stuff's phenomenal. The amount of detail that's gone into it and the advancement that they've had so far. I'm excited. Atlas Brew, we're not going to talk about that. That's that's it's an hour long talk. It, but you can catch it on YouTube on their channel. And then this, this is the newest content. This is Sage Gameplay. Sage. This is what everybody's been waiting on. I mean, I'm excited. It's development footage, but it's also got gameplay in it, so we're going to talk about that. We got some more uh, save gameplay, and we've also had an edition of the Atlas Star come out. Now, I am a comic book fan, but I do not own any um, core comics, so we won't be going over those. But let's go ahead and start. So the Atlas Star, this edition, talks about... Um, the, the economy talks about inflation, growth, uh, the policies that are going to be in place, um, even how we produce things and how that is important. They also talk about um, the way we're going to be able to mine and harvest, the difficulties that will be involved. The economic journey for raw material extraction in the Star Atlas Metaverse. Tell you what, they know how to title. Nothing comes from the void. All in-game assets are the results of the effort, 
investment of time and dedication of players. What this means is that there will be no infinite gas available from the DAO when this launches. It means that we will be responsible for creating the resources that we use. At some point we will be fully sustainable and we will be fully dependent on the entire metaverse for everything. That includes food, repairing our ships, obtaining raw resources, and they're going to do this through the use of career paths. Now they have different career paths. They have a pirate. They've got gas tankers. They've got people who like to uh, repair things. They've got medical. They've got combat. They've got infrastructure. That's what they have. And that is what they are providing to us. And that is that's great. I mean, some people can literally just haul cargo all day long in their tank ships. So the example that they use is the mining operations. And from what I understand, mining will require a claim stake in everything that is not asteroid mining, which asteroid mining can be really risky business. But the claim stake is essentially how you determine this is your plot of land. You find a good spot and you have to stake it. If you don't, you can receive penalties. There is an acting government wherever you are, more than likely. And if not, you should set one up. This one's new right here. Simply, like obviously we all knew that players, pirates, can attack uh, your claim stakes and try to take your stuff and wreak havoc and cause you problems. But just in case we all decide we want to get along, Star Atlas has included NPCs which will directly impact product yield and demand. That means that you must decide what you're going to invest in, whether it's going to be repairing, in defense. I think this part's very interesting too because we are going to be in different factions. We're going to be in different spots. So the commodities in Star Atlas will fluctuate with an open market. So what that part means is that we can have scarcity in areas. So there are three player factions. You got your mud, your ooster, and your onions. I'm ooster, so we're the best. But we probably will have a excess in resources like fuel, like ammunition. And so for us, it can be very cheap. I can go to my centralized space station and for fractions of Atlas be able to be good for the day. But the mud, on the other hand, the human race has been known to create unnecessary taxes, limit the amount some can produce, um, where it can be sold, stuff like that can really affect it. So as an ooster, I might have access to an absorbent amount of fuel and ammunition at a cheap price, and the mud could very well have limited access to it which would cause their price to go up while mine stays the same so it's not one marketplace for everybody it's a real world in game and that that's cool like that is something that everybody's gonna have to be used to so if we continue on we got a variety of resources and the resources will be everywhere, but they will be more um, centralized in certain areas. Like, the Oni are going to have their own type of resource that is just abundant for them. The Oosters are the same, and the Mud are the same. And also, based on the rarity and the scarcity of the resource being mined that could very well determine where it's at because you're gonna have a lot of rare and valuable uh, materials out in the high risk zone and if you really want them or you need them you're going to have to go out there 
or pay somebody to take the risk for you, which adds a whole nother cost to what you get. So they talk about resource richness. Resource richness, which is the measurement of how likely you are to find a resource. So that would be, you know, um, a specific material being very abundant in the Oni province, but not very abundant in the Ooster or the Mud factions. But the closer you are to the inner and most dangerous parts of the galaxy, the more closer you are to Iris, where it all started, you may find different, um, different veins, different strains of resources. Uh, resources with special properties, metals that, let's say, you can find iron ore, but you find a special iron ore that has some sort of other material mixed in with it that makes it different and causes different effects, makes it stronger, makes it more malleable, things along that nature. And then you have the resource hardness, which is how hard is it to get this stuff out of the ground? How hard is it to actually collect this resource? While there might be a million pounds of tungsten there, it's going to be pretty hard to get to because it's tungsten. So it's going to take time. And what time you take doing it, you don't get very much of it. And this, this will be introduced way later. This is the appropriate skill. So as players, we're going to level up, right? And in order to level up, we have to do stuff. Well, doing stuff is going to make us proficient in these areas. And not only will it make us proficient in these areas, but our NPCs, our crew members, the NFTs that we receive that our crew members will have certain skill sets. Maybe skill sets that they came with that you can build up. Or maybe it's a blank slate and you get to pick where you divert your resources and their time and their memory and their abilities into. And as they progress, they grow in these areas, so they become more efficient at it. You can't ask a pilot to sit there and mine for minerals all day long because he likes to fly. He knows how to fly. It's what he does. The same goes with your people who like to mine. They aren't pilots. They aren't. They aren't combat proficient. And so if you get in combat, the group that has taken their characters, their NPCs, and trained them are much better off in the fight than you are. That's logic that makes sense. And then they came out with a new NPC faction. They're more like a religious group of prophet of of prophets and I've read this, they are very vague and they don't get it right sometimes, so it's kind of like real life. They also talk about the roadmap, the things that they're working on, and what they've gotten accomplished. I don't know who Kadelski is, because I'm new in the space, I've only been here four months. Apparently they've started talking with him about UE5 features, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we just don't have time to go over. We're going to go ahead and move on from the Atlas Star. And next thing up is UE5 gameplay. This is my cup of tea. I love this. So let's watch and just enjoy and then we'll talk about it. So much better music than they had before.
now that we've watched it. First, let's get this out of the way. We've had plenty of mud presence. We've had plenty of owning presence. I really feel like Star Atlas is not showing much love to the Eusters, and it kills me. I mean, come on, AI is everywhere right now, and it's everything right now, and we still can't show the Oosters any love, although that only does look pretty cool. I would love to see my race, that'd be awesome. But you can see, this is a somewhat rendered model, obviously it's not complete. Um, you can see that's not his arm, it's his hair running through his body. We can see what looks like a modified hood. This looks a little different than what we have now, but check out the paint. I don't think anybody caught that. Can you guys see the paint on this X4? That blue and gold, that, that's cool. So while they're supposed to be developing the game, <laughs> even they are specking out their ships, which I can't blame them for. You got character customization coming. And this part is awesome because like everybody wants to design their ships and spec them out and make them the way they want, characters are the same. Like, that's your personality, that's who you are. We got Desert here. We got the Opal Jet Jet. And you can see the size of the cabin, it opening up. It's a pretty sleek ride, honestly. Alright, so a lot of people's favorite ship is the ATS Enforcer. This is like a Gundam. This is the Opal Jet. And I'm a little confused on this ship. Because in the description it says that it's good for interplanetary travel, where you can travel from one planet to the next. And I could be wrong, but I don't see how that's possible without you having a good enough suit to withstand the cold temperatures of space. Because this is an open cab. That skin's really cool though, I like that black. Crowd favorite the Lobi, but hold on. This. I've heard a lot about what that is. And I think it is a control panel. I think it could potentially place replace the spire that is in the showroom right now where we call our ships. Another thing it could do is the Atlas crew had been talking about making a spaceship dealership where you can test drive spaceships before you buy them and this could be a selection model for it I don't think this is solar panels because the design is a little intricate and for solar panels there really would be no need not only for there to be different angles but also there'd be no need for them to be different sizes but that's just my guess what do you guys think it is let me know in the description below they are so detailed, they have upholstered the seats in this Pierce. They are upholstered. Look at that. Forming to the size of, of the pilot. Now one thing that I noticed that's just as nitpicking is if you look at this, these arms are, th are the same, but they are inverted at the elbows. So you got this one that is the left arm and this one that's the right arm. But as you come down, you can see you got thumb on the outside, two fingers on the inside. Thumb on the inside, two fingers on the outside. This one should be inverted. That's just nitpicking. But, you know, it probably functions just fine. Just a little OCD kicking in. You got the layout to the ohm, which... I'll never have enough money to afford a rainbow, so I'm, I'm good there. But I did think that this area right here was pretty cool. This is a lounge area. And the fact is that we are going to need showers. So, they thought of that. And as you continue on, 
you can see you got your couch here for just lounging around. Bunk area up top fits four. But here you have a bar as well. Now I think this is going to be like a, a floating globe. Maybe a map system that would be touch sensitive and that that'd be really cool. I mean this is the metaverse. They can do whatever they want and that would be awesome. Bare Bones Earth. This is my ship. And I mean, even with it taken apart, it doesn't look any different. It's literally a pile of dead ships thrown together. Things a beast, though. Now, this looks like a combat vessel. I don't know what ship it is, and I'm not even going to try to guess. But. It looks very tactical, and you can see there's an on-ramp for fighters, but then you also have these open decks for people to stand on and shoot out of, and possibly to have turrets mounted to them, missile systems, and the amount of detail they do is insane. This is the end goal here, guys. This is the warp gate. By the way, as soon as this is done, truce is off. As soon as Mud, Oni, and Ooster come together and build this thing, it's on. Then we are in Season Zero. We got racing. And they were talking about servers that can have over 500 people. Imagine having 500 people in this area just spread around the track getting to watch the race like in real life. That would be so cool. And we're back with the Oni. But then we got the Calico Mudhog. Which, I know this is just a rendering, but I mean, <laughs> I like it as a skin too. They're gonna have racing for this thing? Man. I can't wait to see an underwater track for it either. Exploring caves. Gathering resources that grow in the depths of freezing cold oceans. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the Sage uh, release projected to be out at the end of Q1, but it is the end of Q1 next week. So, I'm predicting early Q2. And here you can see they released this picture that has actual, actual gameplay in it. You've got your UI here multiple different types of ships fighting. It looks like these two ships are on the same side. And the interesting part is although we weren't supposed to have three-way battles, this ship is attacking this ship, which is attacking this ship, which is attacking this ship. That's a three-way battle. That's not allowed. So, anybody got any ideas? But you can see that this is the space station that they have been working on for a while and you can see it's still a work in progress so the question is how is this going to integrate into UE5 because at some point it is and that's really really neat so let's get to the latest video golden era and for those of you that don't know, Star Atlas Golden Era is Sage. So they have the ability to create a variety of planets to where no planet is the same. The planet can be based it's, its terrain and its features can be based on what kind of star it's around, how close it is to that star, any kind of moons that are around it, asteroids, impacts, climate change, whether its core is heating up or cooling off. And I'm sure they're going to use some like AI to generate a whole bunch of them, which they should. 
but it, what this means is that our, our game can be made a whole lot faster and at the same time maintain a high level of quality and a high level of diversity. They even have the ability to ch change the wind in certain spots. Like you can have wind currents on planets. Like what part of this is not real life? The fact that we have aliens, which has yet, yet to be proven. The amount of detail that they can put into this. And right there, we have the warp gate. Uh, the Stargate. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool, uh, but can't wait to see it in use because it's going to cost to go through it. And as you can see, we've got ships on the other side over here. Looks like they're checking each other out. See if they're in for a fight or not. Now, honestly, this seems like uh, a sales pitch to the team. It seems like hey, a, a developer company is like, hey, look what we can do. And they can do pretty good. The only, my only hope is that Star Atlas makes it um, true to Star Atlas. They don't just give them free reign and say, hey, have fun. Because this kind of stuff just this is not real right here not realistic at all while you have this going on this is the battle we were seeing earlier they've now decided they want to fight and my guess would be this little battleship came off of its carrier now this part's super interesting because we've all played with the tractor beam in UE5. That is a tractor beam that appears to be holding a ship in place. Like that ship can't go anywhere right now. They are SOL. And more than likely, that ship holding it is gonna turn and use one big gun to wipe it out. But then you also have, what is that, the thimble? No, not the, the bombardier. That's a bombardier, that's the only one that might be an, a rainbow ohm, based on the triangle shape, just guessing. But before I really screw it up, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Ah, it is, a, it is an ohm. Ha! Ah. Now that looks like the ATF Enforcer with a paint job. Nope, nope, that is the Amboy. That is my ship. I, that is... I want that ship so bad. That's my next ship, by the way. It's my next step on my way to the Vizus, Vizus Opod. Did you guys see the size comparison for planets? These capital class ships here. Man, they're huge. Now guys, that was an impressive video. Now we just need the gameplay. And once they have the gameplay, I'm gonna make sure to put tons of it on, on this channel. Cause it's great. If it can look that good, they really have something. Nobody should be concerned about a runway if they can produce that. Well guys, I did promise you that I had a surprise. All right guys, uh, and for the conclusion to my first ever Star Atlas YouTube video and my first video on this channel. We are going to go ahead and bring in the Metaverse Explorer. Guys, I know someone did say they want to burn their bike. We're going to have a burning party, which is very interesting. Surprise! Metaverse Explorer, this one's for you. Told you I would.
Thank you guys for joining me in today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I'm sorry that it's not 100% professional, but I am working on it. So be patient with me just a little bit. If you liked it, like, subscribe. I'll try to put out some more content here soon. And Metaverse Explorer, if I'm ever lucky enough to have you watch my video, first off, you do amazing work. And second off, if you send me that uh, X4, I will gladly burn it in another video. Um, you can go ahead and find my Solana address in the link below. It's pockthepirate.soul. Thank you for introducing me to domain names, by the way. I, that's changed my entire life in crypto, so... You guys take care, and I'll see you in the metaverse.